Every forensic autopsy begins with a question. Not just what happened, but how do we open the body to find out? Before the first incision, we must decide how we will proceed. Which dissection technique best fits the case before us? Each method has its logic, its legacy, but the practice of opening the human body stretches back far further. In ancient Greece, Hippocrates emphasized observation and deduction, but dissection was forbidden. Later in Alexandria, under Ptolemaic rule, physicians like Erisistratus and Herophilos defied taboos. They cut, they learned. Galen in Rome dissected animals, and for over a thousand years, his flawed anatomy dominated medicine. And centuries later, Morgani gave us the anatomoclinical method, the first true link between pathology and anatomy. Xavier Bichai, though lacking a microscope, introduced the concept of tissues, shifting focus from organs to structure. It wasn't until the Renaissance that we began to correct the record. Leonardo da Vinci drew what he saw. Leonardo da Vinci was not a physician, but his anatomical drawings changed how we see the body. Through dozens of dissections, he documented bones, muscles, vessels, and organs with remarkable precision. Then came the techniques that shaped modern autopsy. Rudolf Ludwig Karl Virchow proposed the individual organ removal method, taking out each organ one by one, analyzing them separately, and recording detailed descriptions. This approach became the foundation of systematic pathological dissection. Maurice Latoul developed the en masse technique, removing the thoracic, cervical, and abdominal organs in one continuous mass, including the vascular structures. His aim was to preserve physiological and anatomical continuity. Anton Gaon further advanced this logic through the en bloc method, extracting organs by anatomical blocks, thoracic, abdominal, cervical. His regional grouping allowed for practical efficiency, especially in pediatric and infectious disease cases. Karl von Rokitansky emphasized a holistic approach. He advocated for in situ examination, observing organs in their natural positions before removal, particularly useful in systemic diseases. His method valued the relational anatomy of organs over isolated inspection. Friedrich Albert von Senker made foundational contributions to pathological anatomy, correlating gross and microscopic findings in ways that deeply influenced modern forensic pathology. Each of these pioneers shaped not just how we dissect, but how we understand the human body after death. Their legacy lives on in every autopsy room today. Because in forensic medicine, the technique is never just about cutting. It is about understanding. As we emphasized in our earlier episodes, the goal is not to follow a fixed protocol, but to select the method that leads to the truth. Every case is different, and so is the technique it demands. The real value lies in developing a case-specific approach. This is why pre-autopsy evaluation matters. Correct triage leads to correct technique, and no single method fits all. Standard operating procedures exist to ensure minimum quality, but everything beyond that must be shaped by the case. Technique is your structure. Judgment is your guide. In forensic autopsy, there is no single path only the path that fits the truth. From the Handbook of Forensic Autopsy by Dr. Murat Nihat Arslan, available now.